They're not paying attention to the history of the league. The league has always been dominated by a few players. The league has historically... It right, just but Mike, in go no look other at time it. did you have all these players on one team? Yes, you did. You know what? You ever see the Boston Celtics in the 60s? They had eight right, Hall of they Famers. Had they had but eight they Hall of Famers. Eight. How many you want on one team? Through that generation, they had eight players make the Hall of Fame. They're in the finals every year. Russell won 11 championships in 13 years. How's the, where was the parity then? And he's playing against Will Chamberlain in the championships he didn't win. Will won. And he beat Luca and he beat he beat Elgin and Jerry in the finals a, ha- a host of times. He beat Wilt. You had a little time in the 70s where you had some different teams win. You know, the Knicks won a couple. Then the Celtics went back and won with Havlicek and Cowens. But if you go and look at it, there's a dominant core that runs through it, you know? Tim Duncan won a bunch of championships. Shaq won championships. Michael won championships. LeBron goes to the finals and wins championships. Now, what he's done is he's taken a team to the finals eight straight years. Do you know that you saw that, Adam Silver, the interview? I'm, I'm sure you did the other night, or maybe you didn't. Adam Silver made the point LeBron has taken 57 different players with him to the finals. 57 different players. I mean, right now, Golden State's a dominant team. We've had dominant teams before. The Bulls were a dominant team. The Celtics were a dominant team. We've had many dominant teams. This is a sport that is dominated by a couple of players. That's how it's always been. How can you say no when Bill Russell won 11 championships? How can you tell me now the parity's worse than it ever was when Bill Russell won 11 championships in 13 years? Nobody's ever dominated a sport like that, ever. Even the Yankees didn't do that. Joe in Bay Ridge. What's up, Joe? Well, hi, Mike. Mike, I want to talk about the bomb on stakes. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, I know justifies the horse to beat, without a doubt. But I want to try something to try to beat him. I came up with blended citizen, Mike. He's got the one over the track. He's he got the long strides. And uh, if he assists the trip, I think he's got a good shot uh, taking this race. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I, I don't see it. I, I don't think there's many horses in there that can run with Justify. Hofberg definitely can. You saw Lucas' horse give him a good fight last time. I don't think there's a whole lot in this race in terms of class. I think there's maybe three, four horses. Maybe four horses. Um, I think Justify will be right there. The question is, when somebody runs at him in the stretch, does he have a lot left? I think he'll have the lead turner for home. The question is, what happens then? Pat Rockville Center, what's up, Pat? Hey, hey, Mike, how's it going? Um, I know you're a big fan of um, interleague play. I'm, a, I'm, I'm not, not a big fan of interleague play. I'm a big fan of rivalry play. I'm not a big fan right. of overall okay. interleague play. All right, so now don't, don't you agree that this doesn't level the playing field, especially when you're going for, like, wild card spots, where some of these teams are playing against perennial losing teams, where a team like the Mets, constantly has to play the Yankees, who always has a good team. Or if you, if you have to pay the Dodgers all the time, then that's a, that's a disadvantage too. Where, you know, a team like the Cubs, they get to play the White Sox. Yeah, it's know, a luck of a, a draw, team. though. You know what? Over a long period of time, it should even itself out. I mean, uh, I, 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 I don't think it... to the last game of the year sometimes. Yeah, but it, I don't... I don't th- I, if, Pat, I don't, think it, I don't think it's that... I don't think these... It, I don't think it's a big enough deal. I really don't. I don't think it's enough games. And I think the other times you are rotating games, except for your rivalry games. And yes, the Mets are going to play the Yankees, and some other team in their division might have a weaker team. But you know what? Atlanta against the Red Sox, they're in that division. You know, I think Philly plays Boston also too. So I mean, you get from that standpoint, I, I don't think it's that big a deal over 162 games. Pellegrino and Bensonhurst. What's up, Pellegrino? How you doing, Mike? Welcome back. What's happening? Uh, you know, I'm just, again, confused what's going on with Cespedes here. I, I, I don't want I don't to think he's ready. 
Well, I don't want to hear he's playing golf either. I mean, like, well, yeah, I haven't heard that or not heard that. I don't know if he is or he isn't. I well, really here's know. a guy that was saying he's going to get out of a slump by playing out there in the golf course. And, you know, if I had to bet, I'm a, I'm a betting guy, 9 out of 10, I bet she's still out there. You don't know that. Is, it's ridiculous. You, well, you don't know that he's playing golf right now. Well, I'm just telling you, you know, this, this quad paying with $29 million a year, he, he should do anything he can to get back on the team. And if it's really an injury, like this quad injury, as he says, that he can't play, uh, I'm just, you know, again, I, I don't want to add fuel to the fire here, but if he's out there playing golf, Mike, yeah. I don't know what you do we don't know that he's out there playing golf. I, I have no. I mean, unless unless you tell me you bumped into him on the course, I don't. I don't know that he's out there playing golf when he's not playing baseball. I don't know that he's doing that. Only thing I know is that uh, I was told that it's highly unlikely he plays this weekend. That's it. Just it's highly unlikely. As of today, it's highly unlikely that he plays against the Yankees. Too bad. We were looking for him to play. Alan Trent, what's up, Al? Hey, Mike. You know, I wanted to get through to you last week. I haven't had a chance to mm-hmm. you get uh, get to you, especially after that Rockets game seven. And I still can't wrap my mind around what they did in that game. You know, talking about Wilt and Russell and them guys, what do you think would have happened if today if Kareem or Russell or Wilt played in today's game? Would they have to change the way they play now with the way the game is going? Would they be the same player that they are that they were back then? So they're three of the greatest of all time, and you know, what would they be today, especially after watching them Rockets jack up 27 straight? They would have changed their own. games. They absolutely would have changed their game. They would have had to. In the way the game is played now, I didn't say they wouldn't be big, a big part of the game. I think they'd be enormous factors. They'd be great players. But they still would have to change their game a little bit, I think. Yeah, because you, you wonder if... They're, but they would still be that, dominant. But... Listen, Will Chamberlain would be dominant now. There's no question. I'll tell you right now, McGee has killed, has killed the, the Cavs in the series. He has killed them. He has he driven them crazy. He just turns and dunks it. He has, he has driven them crazy. He has had so many easy baskets. It's unbelievable. He never misses a He and Livingston, they never miss a shot. They never miss a shot. They make every shot every game. I, I never got your take on that. What did you think of Dan Antonio just sitting there watching them shoot three after three after three and not making any, I mean, any adjustment on them, saying in the press conference that if the game was longer, we would have shot more threes? Well, listen, I only they could beat him anyway, so it didn't make. I, I, I think that was the point. They weren't going to beat him anyway. You know, and I think last night it was just a case of, you know, Cleveland had so many breakdowns. I thought Cleveland actually scored enough yesterday to win the game. Now, it was outrageous that they didn't have any foul shots in the first half. I can never remember a team with the biggest star on the court. And he took 15 shots in the half, and that team at home did not shoot a foul shot in the first half. The only reason that game wasn't 15 points at the half was because Golden State outscored them 12 nothing on the foul line in the first half. How did Cleveland not shoot a free throw in the first half of that game? I mean, I was I, I could not understand how that's even humanly possible. They made up for it. LeBron got a foul shot, you know, thirty seconds into the second half. But of course, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, the first thing that that the coaching staff did was go over to the coaches and say, "We're playing home in a championship game, and we don't have a free throw in our building." And our star player shoots fifteen shots and drives to the basket repeatedly, and he doesn't get fouled once. I mean, that was unbelievable that that was the case. But they actually, last night, I thought, played enough offensively. They actually got what I thought was a good performance. I thought it was a subpar LeBron performance shooting the ball. I thought he shot the ball badly last night. He has games like that. I mean, he scored 33 points, but I thought he also, he didn't get that foul line enough. And he also uh, was not making any threes last night. And then when he's making threes, it's completely out of control. You know, but that last night he didn't make a lot of threes. They clearly got a big lift from Hood which I didn't see that coming, so that that surprised me. Uh, Love had a good game. J.R. Smith started off good and then tailed off like he usually does. But what killed them last night was the fact that clearly Durant had a great game, but that's not what you could live with that because Curry and Thompson had bad games. Curry's game was off the charts bad. But Bell, Livingston, McGee, and Iguodala were 16 for 21 from the floor. Again, you know, Bell, 
Livingston, both four for five. Iguodala, three for four. Uh, Livingston shooting short jumpers. McGee's getting dunks and layups. Iguodala's getting dunks and layups. Bell's getting dunks and layups. I mean, those guys, they all made every shot they took. You can't have that. You can't have the middle body of your team there. And guys coming off the bench hitting every shot. I mean, they you're on the road. And you got guys on the road shooting four for five, five for six, four for five, five for six. You can't win that way. And so at the end of the game, they shoot more free throws and take more free throws than Cleveland, which is going to kill you being on the road. And despite the fact they have a bad night for them from three, including Curry going one for ten, they shoot 52% from the floor especially high in the second half, and Cleveland couldn't keep up. Cleveland has a good first half, and then in the second half, they give up 58 points. And they wind up losing the game. You know, they give up a 31-point third quarter. You know, they give up 27 points in the fourth quarter, and it was just too much. And too many easy baskets. Too many easy baskets for Golden State. And McGee has been a... McGee and Livingston have been an absolute pain in the... I mean, they make every single shot. Dave uh, is uh, in Jersey. What's up, Dave? Hey, Mike. Sorry, I got cut off earlier. What's up? Uh, No, two things is, you know, one thing I'm looking at all series long is Cleveland's inability to communicate on screen. They don't have it. They're a terrible defensive team. They've been a terrible defensive team all year. That I I understand, Mike, but their simple base level communication, knowing when to to hedge hard and trap. Doesn't even matter. When When they switch anyway, you're switching on to, you're switching love on. They're they're getting killed. They play, they play Corver. They play, they play Corver. They play love. These guys couldn't guard anybody. That late dunk by Igudala happened off a bad double. Oh, they only had, how many did they have? How many, how many dunks and layups did they have last night? 15? No, it's been a joke, and obviously, you know, McGee and Livingston, what they're doing. That's why we told you before the series, the series was couldn't work. They don't play any defense, Cleveland. They were playing against a wonderful offensive team, and they don't play defense. So, and if they play it for a half, it's a lot. And last night, they got shots missed early in the first half. The reason they're winning is because Curry and Thompson are missing shots. In the second half, they go to Livingston, they go to McGee, they go to Iguodala, and these guys are getting dunks and layups. Danny in Brooklyn, what's up, Danny? Hey, Mike, I just had a sense for this uh, question, but uh, I was already answered. But uh, I, got, I got a question uh, in this day and age. Uh, what, what's going to be the standard of home run for a Hall of Fame? Years ago when I was a kid, it was, uh, you know, like 500 home runs was standard for a Hall of Fame. Well, 500 will get, unless you, unless you are, uh, unless there's something wrong with you as a player, 500 right. home runs will get you into the Hall of Fame. Wouldn't Dave Kingman be, like, hey, be like, see, see, again, now, uh, I just gave you the statement before I made was, right. unless there's something wrong with you, right. like you're a freak, Dave Kingman was a freak. He's not getting in the Hall of Fame no matter how many home runs he hits. So he's exactly what I was talking about. He's never getting in. So if you're a steroid guy and you hit 500 homers, you're not getting in. If you're a guy like Dave Kingman and you hit close to 500, if Dave Kingman had hit 500, he wouldn't have gotten in. He's not a Hall of Famer. He was a guy who hit home runs. He's not going to get into the Hall of Fame ever. Andrew in West Orange, what's up, Andrew? Hey, Mike, just on that point, who do you think gets in first, a steroid guy or Pete Rose? Pete, listen, like, Pete Rose is never getting in the Hall of okay. Fame unless right. he agrees to go through a whole battery of stuff. He's not eligible for the Hall of Fame. Got, got you. One other, one other question. Um, this debacle that ESPN did with the moving the late game, moving the game from afternoon to late, what are, they, what are these guys doing in ESPN? They, they can't yeah, but it's right. already settled. It's over with, though. It's over. They said, they, 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 it, it was, it, listen, it was a bad, it, 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 was, it was too much to ask. Right. Toronto didn't want it either. Toronto had something going on with the kids that day that they wanted to have a kids' day. They have something that they couldn't do if they did it. They had a family day already. I, it was I think it. LeBron's going to the Knicks. Well, I don't know why you think LeBron's going to the Knicks. I mean, I hey, we'd all love to see LeBron go to the Knicks. I just don't know why it would ever happen. You know, but hey, this time of year, here's what here's what's going on. 
in two days, that's what happens. The season ends, and then every town says, LeBron's coming to my town, and I'm going to the finals next year. So that's what we spend a month on until LeBron makes a decision on where he's going. Every town, and if he went to your town, he's going to take it to the finals. So if he goes to Philly next year, they're going to the finals. If you go anywhere he goes next year, he'll probably still take them to the finals. That'll probably be the case. Where's he going? I have no idea. I don't have I don't have the foggiest. I don't know if he'll stay in Cleveland, not stay in Cleveland. I don't know what he has planned. I have no idea. Bill in Queens, what's up, Bill? Hey, Mike, thanks for taking my call. What's yeah, happening? just to kind of segue on the point you just made, I think the two things that would be interesting is the NBA uh, draft is in actually two weeks from today. Yeah. I think we will know by that night what what his plans are. How would you know? Why would you know then? Well, because here's why. And I'll explain to you. Because... If they make some kind of a, I, I think if they make a draft night trade, then obviously it's more likely that there's something they got to put together. Something they got two, they got basically two weeks to put something together. Why? But he doesn't LeBron. have to declare to them anything yet. So if he doesn't have to declare to them, uh, then they what can they can possibly make a decision? What if there's, he says the nothing? The two best options are you got that eighth pick and you got love. What can you get for that? That's what he's thinking right now. Kobe, uh, well, what Waltman. if he says nothing to them and lets it, them go about their business during the draft? I don't. I don't think he would. I don't think he would do that. I uh, think. It, I, I think either he stays or he goes to Philly. It's that simple. I don't think you'll know. I, I don't. I disagree with you. I think it'll be July before you know where he's going. You, you think it's going to take that long? Yes, you I don't do. Think he would give them that courtesy to say, no. you know what, guys? I don't think he's going to give them any courtesy. Oh, I guess maybe. I, I, I guess I, that's my opinion. I don't think he's going to give him any courtesy. I think he'll play it out to the last day. The second point I wanted to make, you know, it go, Mike, it, like you said last week, it goes back to game one and that call that yeah. that just destroyed the whole. They series. wouldn't have won Thanks, the series Mike. anyway, but no, it would have been it would have been it would have been, been a much more fun series for us to watch. That's for sure. We would have had a lot more fun with it. We would have had a lot more fun with last night's game. Last night's game would have had a lot more intensity because we, listen, I didn't expect them to win the series. And even if they had won game one, which they should have, they still wouldn't have won the series. But it would have been a lot more fun to watch. Now, there's no, you know, you watch game four if you're in the mood. You don't go out of your way to watch it. You know, you're not going to watch it over the Yankees and the Mets, that's for sure. And if they win that, and then you know, root for Game Five for them to somehow win, but you know they're not going to win Game Five. You know what? You know even if they win Game Four, then they're going to go back and get blown out in Game Five. So what's the difference? We know that's the case. Back after this.